I am going to be recording Skylar making biscuits and testing out the Breville. But I'm also going to be eating this delicious banana with peanut butter and a tiny fork. I just thought I'd let you know. Let's make biscuits. Let's make biscuits. All right, so the recipe is actually from the first video that we have on YouTube, which is the vegan biscuit recipe. And this is an oil-free vegan recipe, uh, biscuit recipe. So very easy to make. I've got my favorite pan. It's a doable walled Rima. Rema. Where, where did you get that pan from? From like Savers or DI <laughs> thrift store. If you're ever in the thrift store and you find it, this thing is going to be mad at us because we stopped it. But if you ever can find these, buy them up. So we're going to start with flour. Two cups of flour. We've got flour for days. Yeah, it's good to buy bulk flour and rice. Should we show them our bulk flour? <laughs> Are you going to pull it out? Yeah, this is our, this is our half used one. It's big. Yeah, we get it from Costco. This is from Utah. Um, and this is like six bucks, I think, for like... Yeah, it's way cheap. I'm, I'm also thinking that when we build the new kitchen, we should probably just have a drawer that has those big buckets in them, you know? Yeah, you know what I'm definitely. talking about. Yep. Yep. Just have rice, flour, sugar. Because we go through so much. We do. Gotta find where everything is now. Baking powder. Baking soda. Bone char free sugar. Hey. All right, so we got the flour in. Now we're gonna do one and a half tablespoons of the baking powder. So we got one and roughly half. I like to put stuff away after I'm done using it so I know that I used it. If you want the exact recipe, like in words and text, then you can find it at uh, in the very first video, biscuit video that we made. Yep, it's in the description. <clears throat> yeah, it's in the description. Oh, we'll put it in this description too. Oh, sweet. Why Look not? at that. Why not? Right? Why not? Teaspoon of salt. Put the rest back in. Want not, waste not. This guy doesn't waste nothing. Try not to. Teaspoon of baking soda. So Skylar originally had this recipe using, was it oil? No, using shortening. Shortening. And cow milk. And cow milk. And Back when before he- before I went vegan. Yeah, and then when he went vegan, we just swapped out a couple of things and it worked out perfectly. And we're like, oh my goodness, we need to share this. Tablespoon of sugar. Yeah, and this is one of the recipes that you don't want to mess with the salt, sugar, or baking soda because it's really perfect how it is. Drop stuff on the floor that we just cleaned. <laughs> I'm just going to stir up the dry ingredients. Yeah, we just got the kitchen cleaned and it looks... And we got the Thai Kitchen Organic Coconut Milk. We buy it from Costco because it's like a buck fifty per can. And it's usually what? How much do you think it usually is at the store singly? Like two something. Yeah, you can save quite a bit. You can get a pack of six at Costco of those. Yeah, it's like a pack of six for eight bucks. And that dishwasher is just going to beep at us the whole time, huh? Yeah, we apologize. Sorry, sorry about that. Normally, I forgot to do this, but I shake up the cans usually, but... It won't matter. I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna stir it all together. But yeah, just shake up the can first, really good. And what fancy tool do you need to stir that up? A spoon. It's a fancy tool, right there. A 
And what kind of a consistency are you looking for with this guy? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because it's going to just end up what it, it is. It doesn't matter. I know, but people want to know how long you need to stir this for. Well, until it's mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you have powder everywhere, then you're not stirred up enough. He's your everyday Rachel Ray, folks. There you go. <laughs> it ain't rocket science. Just make sure you've stirred it up. Because consistency wise, that's it's gonna be what it is. Because you're just adding the two cups of flour and you're adding the whole can of the coconut milk. Right. So. Okay. Now I need to grab me another bowl and just throw some flour in it. <laughs> Not too much. Not too much in there. Nah, or maybe half a cup. To, just enough to toss it around. Yeah. How many biscuits are going to go in this pan? Roughly nine. Nine biscuits. How many are going in my mouth? <laughs> half of them, because I'm eating the other half. Yeah. If my kids were here, if our kids were here, whew. Yeah. We need to, we usually make them in the casserole dish if all the kids are here because they love them and they will eat them all. This is the part where your hands get a little messy, but, and you can let it sit a little, a little, just for a minute if you want to, but, and I'm not concerned with getting nine exact out of here because no one else is here to eat them but us, so. I think normally I use a bigger bowl for this, so it's probably gonna get all over the counter, but. That's all right. A washcloth whatever. can uh, take care of that. So you don't have to like make it perfect when you're spooning it out of that bowl. You kind of nah. just grab a glob of it, don't you? And then you kind of form it just like yeah, that in it, your hand. It's gonna have like, you know, crevices and stuff. Crevices. Yeah, and we've, we'll probably down the road do some more videos, but this base recipe is good for some like coffee cake type stuff. Oh done. yeah, that's right. We did test it out with some cinnamon in it. It was still oil free though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we, we uh, flavored it with cinnamon and made like this bake and it was so good as like a cake base almost. And then I use a, a coconut milk drizzle with powdered sugar. We do try with the sugar, we do try to get um, bone, bone char, char free. free, yeah. Cause well, vegan, you know, hashtag vegan. Um, these are gonna be a little bigger, but so I probably won't get nine. Really well, if I get. You have six so far. I'm we'll that I might long. get eight. I'm gonna do an eight. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be eight for this one. You can you can get nine or ten, typically. It just depends on what you want to do, but. And I mentioned this in the first video, the recipe video. You want to do it in a round pan. You don't want to, or I mean, you can do it in a square pan, but you don't want to do it on a, like, so this recipe, the original recipe I had before I was vegan, it's a similar recipe to like a drop biscuit. But normally drop biscuits, you just put on a, like a cookie sheet. But the reason why you want to do it in here, which I mentioned in the first video, is because as they huddle together, they have nowhere to go than up. So you're gonna have these nice, thick, tall, tall biscuits that are really fluffy. Tall biscuits, tall fluffy biscuits. Or if you do it on the pan, they're just going to expand outwards as well. Right. And so as in the first video too, you know, just kind of get it more centered. So they're crowding together. That's ready to go into Ooh, normally look oven. Look how delicious these are going to be. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to wash my hands. All right, we should probably get the uh, Breville yep, preheating. So, so I'm going to do a traditional, this has the ability to do convection, stuff like that. But because I'm, I want to do it for the bake, we're going to do for 450. Do we always do it at 450? Yeah. Oh. And I didn't realize it was so hot. Time is going to be 18 minutes to start, so we're going to start the preheat, and we'll come back. We'll come back to you. She's going to talk about this new Breville um, 
I yeah. Know, I clean up the yeah, we've camera. so maybe I don't know. Can I show my face? Show what you want. Okay. All right, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this oven. Skylar and I have been thinking about purchasing this oven for quite a while now. We use our air fryer a lot. And we have six kids and two adults. And the air fryers, none of the air fryers that I know of, are really big enough to handle what we need. And so we that's why we've been thinking about getting this. It is pricey, I will be honest. Uh, the smallest model, I want to say, starts at... Two. Is it two? I think it's two. But we knew that we wanted the big one if we were going to get it. So we were waiting and waiting for it to go on sale. Finally, it did go on sale at Bed Bath & Beyond for $320. This model right here, it's usually $400. So it went on sale for $319.99. And the sale was going until November 22nd. And then I had a 20% off coupon. And I was like, well, why don't we try to combine the 20% off coupon and see if that will work? So, we went to our nearest Bed Bath & Beyond, well, Skylar did, and he bought it. And we got it for $273. We got this $400 Breville Smart Oven for $273. So we have just been so excited to have it. We're excited to have it be an addition in our new kitchen. And honestly, the new kitchen is such an important part of our house because we spend so much time in the kitchen making food together. So. We're excited all the, time. all the time. So we're really excited to see if um, the biscuits turn out. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't. It's just crazy to me that this powerful little toaster oven can do can do it all. <laughs> anyway, so we will see. It's such an easy recipe too that you don't have a lot of things to clean up afterwards. Um, because all of the things that you actually measure are dry ingredients. So you really just rinse it off and then and you're done. One bowl is dry ingredient and the other one just needs to be done. Guess what? They need to go in. They need to go in. It's ready to be baked. Oh, I was going to say the other really amazing thing that I love about this is that you can see what's going on. You can see how crispy things are getting, how things are rising, etc. It just has this little light right here on it to push when you want to look at it. So I love that. I'm really excited about this toaster oven, if you couldn't tell. Me too. Last bite. Quick side note. Can I just say that a banana with some peanut butter on it? It is so good. Was it called something sushi? It's called a... It's called banana sushi, I think. I don't know. But every time I go to the gym, they have it. They have like snacks on the screens, and they always have peanut butter on banana for a snack. And every time after I go home from the gym, I'm like, oh, I want peanut butter with banana. So I just, okay. I just thought I'd let you know. I was gonna gym shame you. You were gonna gym shame me? I'd be like, oh, look at me. Oh, look at me, I go to the gym. I actually don't, like, I mean, I go, I think I go to the gym a regular amount, not a freakish amount. That, well, maybe that doesn't sound very nice either. I don't know. Anyway, eat your bananas and peanut butter, that's all I'm saying. They are already rising and I'm so excited. They've been in for three minutes so far. They're getting pretty, you know, golden on top. And so I just want to make sure, because it still has seven minutes left. So right. I'm just testing it. We're not used to how quickly this might cook. And, you know, we've heard that it cooks more efficiently because of the fans that are, it's cooking on all sides, basically. Well, I, I don't have the convection on it, so it's not a fan. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, but it is more efficient, probably. I'll probably give it at least two minutes we'll see we might take it out at four uh, about 14 minutes so when this so 14. when this says four maybe yeah okay um, we're just we're just we're just, watching we're just testing it you know all right so we just took them out skylar thinks that they might be done so we cooked them for a total of 15 minutes about right well in the in the other video, in the description, I do say check them out 15 minutes because they do look really 
golden. There's altitude differences, there's oven differences, things like right. that. Right. So. They look good though. So we're gonna let them rest for a couple minutes and they're gonna continue to cook just like cakes. That's why you, cakes, you don't take them out like when the center is dry, you do it two inches or whatever in. Yeah. Because it's gonna continue to cook as it goes. Right, so. okay, perfect. They do look good though. All right, we are confident enough that these are done. They look delicious. They look nice and moist. I think you can use that for a couple more days. Use what for a couple more days? The word moist. Yeah? It's allowed, I think. For a couple more days. All right. Now, the easiest Do you want to way, taste, test it? Well, the easiest way to open these is you just take the fork, just kind of stab in the middle. Oh, let's get your hand out of the way there. There you go. Rawr. Looks like a mouth. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. It looks so good. Oh, this is exciting. You want to taste it for everybody to see? Yeah, we just got some strawberry jam. Let's go for a top piece. Well, that's a lot of jam. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. We're good. We're good. Okay, right, here's the see. here's the taste test. How is it? Amazing. Amazing. We shaved three minutes. Oh, he's feeding me. We shaved three minutes off the cook time in the brevel. Okay, so how many stars, Skylar, for biscuits? Well, it is my recipe. I might be a little biased. Five stars. I know, but I mean for the cooking. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It did a great job. It did a superb job. Yep. All right. That's it for now. See you later.